beautiful people. We're back. Today, we have Mr. Andrew McGee in for an interview. We've got an interview wrench, and we're gonna interview his machine. Well, that's not all. You're gonna talk to his machine? Yeah. Oh no, yeah. him, about his machine. <laughs> that's how he gets stuff done. <laughs> well, we're gonna tune the shocks today, yeah. but that's after. We thought we'd talk about this, uh, this K&M golf cart first here. Got like a one year-ish, roughly, review? Bought it last spring. Yeah. Yeah. We did an initial review on yeah. this machine when he bought it. If you've seen that video. If not, go check it out. And it's the video where we talked a bunch of shit and upset people. <laughs> we made yeah. fun of our friend, but yeah. we were. We were just the talking about the machine. Yeah. It's just a little cute golf cart. A little gaffer. So, you know, it's great. It works good. So since that video, what have you done to it? So it came with, I think it was just the roof was the original add-on we got from the dealership. They threw it on for me when I picked it up because I have a couple friends there. Um, we've added a, quite a bit of lighting because the stock halogens are... Garbage. Junk. So what, just so what lights candles. have you added then? We've got some Strands brand from a, one of our friends has a connection with those. So what size is that? I believe this is the 12-inch double row with DRL. So it looks like it's got a flood and a spot pattern. It's a mix. Yeah, it's a column over, I don't know where we look. So we got a nice light Ooh. bar. It's stupid bright, but it's also mainly a spot in the middle, so you can see way down the road, which is quite nice. We also have Strands brand side shooters with DRLs. So I might just watch the camera for a second. So, that was bright. Fun. Yeah, you yeah. enjoyed that? Yeah, that hurt my eyes. And then it's got white as well too for just normal cubes. Are these they're, mounts K and M, or are they Amazon? Amazon mounts, okay. They're they're okay. Yeah, they're holding it on. I there. mean, they yeah, I haven't fallen off. They're only like 10, 20 bucks, I think, yeah, for a yeah. set of four. Can't go wrong with that. We added on a thick factor, factor, factor fifty five uh, mount for the front because the original stock hook is a little bit chintzy. Yeah, we kind a of bent bit. it. Yeah, it's like kind of like like a little tykes toy. It's I think they been, call that a thimble. Yeah, yeah that's that right. Yeah. Thimble mount? That one's been used and abused mostly when we were camping and we wanted some firewood and yeah. it's been dragged a bit. There we was had a, had a few wobbly pops when we hooked it up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was two in the morning. We need that tree. We need a tree. It used to have a worn little shackle on it. It's somewhere back in, in nature. <laughs> if you find it, we'd yeah. love it to be returned. You could mail it to It matches it to the it. ones on the Jeep, so it was kind of It's great. to have. But yeah, but it's like little guy. We added side view mirrors so you can actually see. So when you're trying to back up, you're not yeah. smoking trees. And those look like they're K&M. K&M brand, the fold. Yeah. They're quite nice. Nice. Very good view on them. We yeah, added these. these. They're interesting mounts. They really grab the cage. Those I think are also Amazon too. Yeah. The, it's not a normal tube, so you yeah. have to like be pretty particular on which clamps you use. I'm not too sure if a normal round clamping style would actually hold on great. Yep. I mean, they'd probably work for light duty stuff. These have a bit of heft to them. So these just kind of clamp onto the form structure. We've got a tinted windshield, which helps quite a bit. Kicks most of the dust and dirt wind up and over your head. Yeah, windshields are nice, the half windshields, yeah. We'll probably do similar to what you've got in the works there with a rear windshield. So that'll help be up and coming. Get some of that. We've added. Looks like an ox beam eight gang. An ox beam eight gang. Some for all your extra fancy storage. lights. Yeah, because there's no storage in this we found except for that. This one's like it's, it's huge. It's huge. <laughs> Wet wipes, those Probably are great. Your might, butt wipes. Might not want to open that up. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good size. This though you can swap out for a subwoofer if you want some more. Oh yeah, we also added sound. Oh yes. There's all the speakers, I forgot about that. It's a party oh, yeah. bus now. That's all Can-Am as well, the full yeah. Can-Am stereo system. It all, other than a couple of nut certs you install, it all bolts in all the wiring channels are already pre-installed so literally all the wires are hidden from factory which is pretty cool okay. oh that's sweet. it's super easy to install it's that's all sweet. like click connect done yeah there's lots of debris still in this thing it's all dirty <laughs> still yeah um, and then what else have you, you got have two here? more lights back here oh. oh yeah we got the rear lights so you can see behind you there's a couple other goodies we'll probably get there's a big storage cover we'll probably add on with the cooler that goes inside and get a little jerry can of fuel on top yeah but so far, that's pretty much the majority of everything we've added to it. It's been pretty good. It, How many kilometers do you have on it so far? Good question. We are at 878.5 kilometers. Wow. 
Probably That's ready. brand new. It's just broken in. I think you still have the original oil yeah, in it. It does. <laughs> we literally drove it all summer and parked it. That's about it. So today, we're going to take the shocks off and finally make it ride a little bit smoother. Maybe you should show people hopping on the back here. It's still got the factory tune. We don't have any trails open at the moment that we can go. We really wanted to do a before and after of this thing on the trails, but all of the trails around here are kind of snowed in and you don't really want to wreck the trails for snowmobiles. So the snow is melting, but we still don't want to go and cause any damage to the trails. It's so sloppy outside right now. It, it's muddy. You so just ripping into every single trail. And yeah. Kicking up mud. And unhappy campers would be showing up pretty quick. For sure. And we yeah. get stuck with these tires pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, they're not the best tires. If there's anything we've learned about these tires is they don't work well in mud or snow. No. So our best thought was to just hop on the back of this thing and kind of show you guys how much it moves right now. And then we're going to make some changes to these shocks and give Andrew a smoother ride. So this is now on setting three, which is supposed to be the stiffest setting. Which... <laughs> We've got about 28 PSI in each tire, which is about how it came from the dealership. So runs really well on the road. Not so great on any obstacles because he just wants to bounce and take off. And you even drop them back down to their lowest setting. I don't see a difference. A more, it doesn't really change much. It feels, looks about the same. Yep. It's and I, honestly, I can tell you from a lot of the shocks I do and a lot of the customers I talk to, they all complain about that. So these are QS3 shocks. There's three positions on them where the KRX is LSC. So there's 20 something clicks. And the most common complaint with the QS3s is whether you go to position one or position three, the vehicle still feels the same going down the trail. What a lot of people don't understand is that that clicker isn't really going to make much of a difference for those small bumps like what he was just doing jumping on it or uh, little rocks or little potholes on the trail. Those are designed for the oil coming out of the shock and into the reservoir for really big hits. When the chrome shaft goes all the way up in, it's gonna take up space where the oil is, so it has to displace that oil into the reservoir. So that's where the clickers come into play. But most of the time, people complain about a stiff ride on just the bumps, like the small stuff on the trail. The so chatter. when you turn those clickers, you're actually not gaining that benefit. You need to change the internal valving on the piston for the small bumps. And then that one, two, and three will make a drastic difference when you're going fast on the big bumps. Yeah, does that sound about right, Andrew, oh, with yeah, your experience? A big G out stuff, too. like when we ripped up, in, up north or on the gravel trails, you set that on the stiffest, you feel like you're in a race car because it doesn't lean, it doesn't give you anything. Yeah. Crank it back down to one, gives you a little more body roll. It's definitely noticeable at speed or at higher uh, G outs. But you hit a big whoop or something like that and loves it. But anything yeah. small, you just, da, 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 you feel like it just, just chatters your teeth out. Yeah. yeah. And that's common on all of them. And then tire pressure also plays a big role. So he did, what were you running for tires before we just pumped them up? Eight, eight and a half, I think. Eight and a half. So oh, yeah. super low, yeah. To try and help with the chatter. So now he'll probably be able to run a, a bit more tire pressure on average. If you're going to go rock crawling, he's probably go back down to eight or so. But on regular trails, maybe 12 to 15, and it won't chatter your teeth out as much. So, we're gonna fix his problems today. Yeah, let's get after Some it. Some of them. Some of them. <laughs> Can't help you with the mental ones, sorry, bud. <laughs> Not qualified for that. <laughs> One more thing that we're going to do before um, we take these shocks apart and take them out is I need to build a database for this vehicle. I've never done this vehicle, so Andrew's gonna take a bunch of measurements so that we know this information before we start making changes. And I'm gonna figure out what the spring rate is, factory, and everything. So, the first thing I need Andrew to measure is how much shaft is showing on the shock, the chrome shaft. So, what do you got there, Andrew? Go uh, from the very bottom of the spring where it's sitting on the bucket. Yeah. Bottom there to the... To the seal head. Five and a half. Five and a half. Five and a half inches. It doesn't have to be exact. It's got to be... Sounds about average. Close. Yeah, that's about an average shaft. <laughs> <laughs> on a preload, we're basically right on two inches the top preload. That sounds more about average. <laughs> okay. Total spring length. Spring length. We're sitting right at... Do you want... 13 and 7 eighths? Yeah. Ride height. Call it 15 and a half. Okay, now we gotta do the front. On the front shaft, we have seven inches. 
Seven inches. Above Ooh, average. That's above average. <laughs> On preload. We're right at four and three eighths. Four and three eighths. That can get the job done. <laughs> what kind of video is this? <laughs> We're gonna get demonetized. <laughs> 13 and a quarter for coil. Sixteen inches on the front side for car clearance. An extra half inch on the front end. Wow, that's for skipping the bumps. Yeah. All right, now that we know all the base settings, we can start taking these shocks off, get all the base internal settings, and figure out what all the springs are. I want free length and weights on them, and we'll measure all the shims, see what oil's in it, and go from there. Andrew, that's upside down. We got one shock out. Now Andrew's trying to figure out how to do this because he is the apprentice today and I am the teacher, right? Yeah, you should stand. Oh, are you doing your own shocks? Oh, that's he, shocking. He be. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I didn't get a that, lot out of that one. That gold clamp needs a clamp right in here. Mm. Okay. Oh, yeah. And that, shit. Yeah, orange, that orange knob is what does the clamping action. Oh, yeah, now you're certified. Ratchet that down. So the rubber bumper, the bump stop inside there is what's holding that cap up. So take that red pry bar. Seems like a workout. You're taking an awfully long time to do this. The viewers are going to be bored by the time you get that off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you got to undo the ratchet and let the spring come up. There you go. All the way. Pull the hooks out. Let's go. There you go. Take the spring off. Ta-da! Okay, now we're gonna have to measure that spring and measure that shaft. I want to know all those numbers and stuff. So, sir, yeah, grab a hold of that. You got her. Did you just get a B-roll. Just oops, oops, we're cleaning. Oops. <laughs> okay, measure that shaft. How long is that, baby? I'm thinking. I'm thinking that's a, a ten incher. Or is it an eight? It's a eight and three quarters. Eight and three quarters. 8.75 inches, full extension. How long is that spring now, now that it's free length? So free length means there's no weight on it, it's just hanging out. Looks like 17. Yeah, we'll go. Free length, 17 inch. Okay, now we gotta set up the press and we gotta scale that and figure out how stiff that puppy is. Okay. So what we're doing here is we're gonna squish this spring two inches, because Hooke's Law says a spring isn't accurate at full extension or full compression. It's most accurate in the middle of its range. So you want to go at least two or three inches down. Every inch that you squish a spring and how much pounds you read on the scale tells you how stiff the spring is. So if we go two inches down and we'll read the scale, it's digital over there, we'll tell you how much pound force it required to compress this spring two inches Take that pound force and divide it by two so you know every inch how much, because springs are rated by inch. Mm -hmm. So say it's 600 pounds we see when we push this down two inches, divide that by two, that's a 300 pound spring. That's what we're gonna figure out, because they don't tell you from the factory. Now, I put eyebox springs on everything and yep. eyebox tells you 250, 300. Comes stamped with it. Stamped right on it, but a lot of these aftermarket companies are painting over those springs or whatever springs they use, they don't tell you. So this is how you figure it out. Uh, you could use a bathroom scale maybe if it went high enough. I don't know how stiff your scales are, but I use a vehicle scale, put it in the press. We know that this was 17 inches, so we're gonna go to 15 inches. We're gonna read this scale and we're gonna divide that by two and we're gonna know what your rear spring is if we ever wanna change it for a better ride. And then we have everything written down too, so you just reference that and go right from there. Exactly. Makes sense? It's simple. Yeah, it's very, very simple. There's no rocket science. So is there already a number on that scale? Because this spring weighs something, so we have to tear it. Um, we're at 18, 19. See, so now you got to tear it. We want no poundage because the spring weighs something and we're not accounting for that weight. Yeah. Details matter. Devil's in the details, okay? So we're at, well, not quite 17. This spring's 16.75. So what's that minus two? 14.75. Big numbers we're working with. Math is difficult, okay? Mm -hmm. 
Almost. 14.75. What do we Woo! got? We're at 425. 425. Okay, so that's a 200 pound spring. Because the 25 the springs are usually always uh, 100, 125, 150, 175, 200, 25 pound increments. So you can't divide 25 by 2. You're not going to get a 212 pound spring. So mm -hmm. it's going to be a 200 pound spring. Because if I just move this the tiniest, like a, a 16th of an inch, it'll go down yeah. to 400. So you have to use discernment in that case as an experience to realize that springs only come in certain increments. So the closest whole number, 400, 450. Um, so this is a, what did I just figure 200. out? It's a 200, 200 pound spring. Yeah. Okay, that's good. No that this is a 200 pound spring. And before we took the vehicle apart, we mm -hmm. measured how long that spring was. You take 200 pounds and divide it by that number or subtract it. I had to look at the piece of paper. I'm hard to remember these things. And it will tell you how much weight is actually sitting down on that spring on the vehicle. It'll, cause it takes, when you weigh a vehicle on corner scales, that's accounting for everything. The weight of the tire, the yeah. weight of the A-arms, the weight of everything that's, there's sprung weight and unsprung weight. So if you know that this was 17 inches and it's a 200 pound spring and it's riding at, what was it, 15 inches in the vehicle, so then it would be 200, 400, 15, 16, 15, 16, two inches. It's supporting 400 pounds of sprung weight per corner. So that means the back of the machine is 800 pounds on those springs. Okay. Not accounting for tires and brakes yeah. and axles, and just sprung weight, the weight that's on top of the springs. So that's why you want all this data so you can figure out what this is supporting versus what the vehicle weighs. Because I don't care what the vehicle mm -hmm. weighs. What the tire weighs means nothing. It's only what this is supporting up top. So it's important. 16.75 subtract. In the vehicle, it was 13.875 equals 2.875. And you times that by the spring's weight rating of 200 means the corner weight that the spring is supporting is 575 pounds. That's what per side, so times that by two, the rear of that side by side is 1,150 pounds with no gear in it. Yeah, it's completely empty and like half tank of fuel. Yeah, and that's not accounting for tires, and like I was saying. So the, the machine actually weighs more when you account for everything that's unsprung. Yeah. This is just sprung weight on top. So now if you wanted to change your spring rate and change your preload for a better ride, you know what it's supporting based off that factory 200 pound mm -hmm. spring, and you know how much preload was on it, you can dictate, say you needed a 250 pound spring with one inch of preload to get your desired item. You need all this data to do it correctly to figure out what you want to do. Okay, we forgot a step, so we're going back here. We put the spring back on the shock because we measured the free length, but we didn't measure the actual preload on the spring before removing it. We only measured the amount of threads on the shaft or on the shock to know how much they had that set, but that's not a true number of preload. The true way to measure preload is to know how much you've compressed this spring when the shock is fully extended, not in the vehicle, from its free length. Its free length was 16.75, so we put it back in here and we cranked it back down so that we're not gonna put the cup on, but the cup is where it would be sitting if we installed it. There's just no point in putting it back on. So now we're gonna measure how much the spring is compressed. It's 15.5. So 1.25 inches. Inch 15.5 inches. Um, so it's equals 1.25? Yes. yes. 1.25 inches of preload. So you know that the spring is 200 pound spring. So if you do 200 pounds times 1.25 inches, that spring is supporting, before you even put it in the vehicle, it's already got a force of 250 pounds on that shock. So 50 pounds more than the actual spring rate. Yeah, because you put a preload on it, so it's yeah. storing that energy. So we forgot to do that because I needed to know that number, what the factory preload is on it. Um, a lot of people 
when they talk about preload, they only talk about how much thread is showing on the top and to measure down. That's not preload. Preload is how much the spring has compressed. That's just an easy way to tell guys to measure from without explaining preload and how much energy is being stored in the spring. Gotcha. These shocks. What the is that? These shocks have a rubber pellet, not a screw, so I can actually check them. Check other things with that. It's got 100 PSI in it. Woo. Okay, and what so should these be good. at, do you know? Uh, I'm probably gonna set them at like 125, so that's still good. Okay. There. Neat. What's in there? Just kidding. Oh, it's got a plastic IFP. How do you not want billet shiny parts on them? It's got JM92 in it. Is that good? That's good oil. Can am for you. Top quality. Oh, well, they cheaped out and didn't give you a top out spring. They gave you a top out bumper. Just kidding. That's quite a stack up there. Yeah, that's a big old stack of room. Now we got to go through and measure every single one of these and write down. I've got sheets I got to print out and fill out Ooh. all this on stock data, and then we're going to come up with a tune. We're going to change them all and we're going to shove it back in there. Sounds good. And that's going to ride great. Holy, look at them all. Whoa! Okay, we're back. We've been mucking some chippies mm -hmm. and having some pop. Chippies. We just educated Andrew here on how to tune his own shocks so that he'll know what he wants changed in the future if he wants anything changed. He's yeah. learning here. We have an, an array of sizes here. So um, we wrote down all the factory settings. Don't mind my scribbly writing. Um, I should put this sheet on the website if people want to download this so oh, they we can, can do, do that. this. That'd be a nice download for people. We mm -hmm. should hook the people up. So. This is all the factory shims. Now that I know what comes in these from Can-Am Fox when they spec it out, I'm gonna do some thinking here and take some time and come up with a new shim stack for compression and for rebound and try and make this thing a lot more subtle. Um, they have softer. quite the stack in this thing originally, so we're gonna make some changes here. And we're not gonna go over that in the video because that's why you come here, so that I put my tune in it, and you'll just so, see it right. So there. if someone were to send you their shocks, obviously you don't have the vehicle here, what would you be asking as far as what they want changed? I ask the riding style, um, what kind of trails they ride, um, how aggressive they ride, and also what weight they have in the back of the vehicle, what springs they have on the vehicle, um, if there's one or two riders, roughly what they weigh. Um, and how they have their shocks set up currently. Do they run them with the clickers stiff right now? Do they run them with the clickers soft? Do they find that it's bottoming out a lot? Most people I find, like we discussed earlier, it's the chatter bumps. It chatters mm -hmm. their teeth, and then when they hit jumps, it's still pretty plush. So I'd say 80% of shocks that come in, I'm fixing the chatter bumps and making the soft, uh, making it soft for smaller bumps, yeah. and then still allowing it to take big hits. Does that and sound then, about right, Andrew? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then most times I'll set it up so that you ride around with your clickers on full soft for 90% of the time so that you have the ability to really stiffen it up. And usually I set my tunes so that it's like 100% difference in stiffness from mm. full soft to full stiff. It's like doubling the stiffness that you feel versus factory. You go full soft to full stiff, as we showed, it's no. almost negligible like you can't even really notice it but once I make my changes you really notice it and people seem to like that so cool. um, I have a whole database on the computer because I made these sheets to fill everything out so once you do a lot of these vehicles and you ask people the feedback for the tune you gave them and you know what you did you can put that into each one going forward and you know what their springs were and how they ride and yeah. you just build all it's all about data building it up and then you get a good idea of how to help people cool yeah so do your thinking Thinking. Work your magic. Magic. So Andrew's upgrading it to the new nitrogen caps. Look how pretty. It's nice. It is very Billet pretty. aluminum. So <laughs> we're going to shove this in here. We're going to put some nitrogen in there to hold the IFP. Ooh. That's it. That's it. Just a little 
splash. Wow. Okay, just shake your finger Definitely getting demonetized. <laughs> We have to see if it's gonna be any good. It might be too soft, it might still be too stiff. We are not sure. What are your predictions? We haven't fully tightened everything in there. We just gave them a good snug. Shocks are on number Shocks one are still. On. Soft, they are on. Yeah, soft is setting. Make sure. So we don't know, it might be too soft. We gotta figure out this tune. It could take all day to get a good tune in this. There is some movement though. Just push on the bumper with your hands. Okay. That is already oh. significantly better than what it was. So you could barely move it with, I'm now put it on three and do that. That's like, that's worse. way better than it was before even on one. Mm. All right, now jump up in there. We'll put back to its softest. Let's see. Okay. Ooh, like butter. That's it looks pretty good. Now three. So maybe go take it for a drive. We might have to put some valving back in. Might be too soft, but it might be really nice. Yeah, you might like it. Look at it bounce. Wow. Andrew's getting his aerobic workout in. <laughs> That's noticeably smoother. Take her for a rip, bud. All right, sir, what's your first impression? I know you can't really do a whole lot out there right now. <laughs> Just that little rip when we are wet and gross, but always the back end feels so much softer already. Just little bumps, little like chatter you get through the driveway and you just go in and out of the garage here or through the dip. It just soaks up a lot nicer. Perfect. It doesn't feel, it, you used to really feel like you're hopping along the stones. Well, mm. you haven't done the front yet. Yeah. yeah. So you, the back end you definitely feel sits a little bit lower. Feels a lot softer. Yeah, we'll measure the uh, ground clearance now. See where we're at. And then, mm. yeah, we'll swap the fronts. The fronts are a little more involved because you got to pull the whole plastics off the front there and get easy access to the bolts. So far, so good? So far, so good. Dope. We got the shocks done. We're back. We didn't film all of it. We just put a bunch of filming together. Five hours later. We went for pizza. We did go for pizza. Yeah. I yeah. got one more to do. But yeah, first time with this tune. We'll see how it works. He has a jump test to show you. He's pretty excited about it. I don't know if we showed the jump test for the front originally, but in general, it act the machine actually moves now. It actually moves. Significantly softer. What a novel idea. Yeah. We'll give her a little test run. Test run. See how it feels. Yes. See if the front now moves. Excellent. You got to zoom in. You got to put a couple plastics back on. Yeah. 
And what did you find in the two front shocks? Oh yeah, what did we find in the front shocks? One has blue oil, the other one has red that matches the rear. Yeah, so three out of four had red, one out of four had blue. Yeah, the PTFE oil. Yeah. Junk, they ran out and they just said, send it out the door. It was, it was built on a Friday. <laughs> yeah, like it was all it was in stock unit. Like it wasn't a rushed custom order. It was yeah. in the showroom, in a crate, ready to go. Yeah. Hmm. Just oh, how you? I mean, yeah. that's assembly lines. Yeah, <laughs> that's what people don't realize. And they're oh, my shocks don't leak, or mine are this, or mine are that. Man, it, their shocks they just get pumped up out the door one Same. after another. Yeah, yeah. you got to so. take care and pay attention, and yeah. They're dialed in now, hopefully we'll see. We might do another tune. This is just our first bass tune on them. We have nothing to base it off of, so we just used our experience from other vehicles and put something inside there. Yep. We went with the baller billet resi caps, good choice. Gives them a little bit more volume, looks really good, and it keeps the Schrader safe from being snapped off from stuff because they're recessed up inside. Uh, I think we set it at 125 PSI on the nitrogen, and we put a bit of a, a soft, supple, uh, supple. Su supple, subtle, 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 I can't speak. Supple. Subtle. 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 Oh, subtle. Oh trail what do you guys think of our wrench? Should we keep doing this? We just thought it was a cool idea today, so we yeah. put our microphone on it. Yeah. Let us know in the comments below. Throw some plastic back on there. Take her for a little rip skier around the front yard. <laughs> Andrew is a seasoned shock tuner now. Yeah, we got four whole shocks behind us. That's plenty qualified to do everyone else's now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know all the answers. Exactly. All the tools are you, in the corner. You, you made no mistakes. Yeah. It was no perfect. mistakes. Yeah. He even figured out the fluid was a different color. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. His eyes were <laughs> color coded. It is significantly softer. The nicest part so far, just doing little rips around the property, is we go through the little geodes, and when you get that traffic, ah. that, when you go yeah. up in the air, <laughs> But I like, when you go up and down <laughs> and you hit the bumps, <laughs> when you're losing traction on the front end because you're lifting up, it's they're so stiff that it's like it's bouncing you way back into the air too, like rebounding. So you found there is way. It's way softer, so when you come out of it, like the slower tires stay, rebound. Yeah, the tires stay on the ground longer and give you better traction, and they're not just sending you into the sky because they're pushing. There's so much pressure on them. So slower rebound. So that's much softer, slower, smoother gives you feels like way better handling but it, even just going through yeah, little bumps here like bouncing across the driveway stuff it's just soft and flowy and smooth doesn't jar you in the hit because you get a few spots too where you hit and it just like vibrates right through your spine you expect mm -hmm. it to be rough and it's just like, yeah oh it's a cloud of titties yeah cloud of titties exactly yeah, it's a cloud of titties now yeah so and that's for just me guessing on the first attempt yeah. i've never yeah. been inside these yeah that's good i think there's more time cleaning them than there was actually just oh yeah, you dick, Definitely. you brought me muddy shocks. Yeah. <laughs> Don't bring me muddy shocks. So you'll have to give a firm review when we actually get out on a trail and go trail riding, but Probably for now, it, it, like, it looks way better just the way it moves yeah. with yeah. you bouncing on you it. Just yeah. You barely need any pressure, just get some lean into it. Yeah. Yeah, so now it actually has sit-in. When a person gets in it, it actually squats a little bit for the added weight. Mm -hmm. Where factory, you'd hop in, it wouldn't even budge. Yeah. It's just like a brick. Yeah. And then you go over little bumps in the driveway and the whole chassis and the thing's moving. To, you feel everything now. Yeah. You just see the tires moving and it's just it's level. So much smoother. Yeah. yeah, I'm really excited to see it on the trail. Yeah, we'll yeah. probably get it out May or June and May or June? Say, May what are you, You're Canadian, bro? Yeah. <laughs> I hate the winter. <laughs> I'm a terrible Canadian. <laughs> I'm a terrible Let's Canadian. Let's move to Texas. Oh, I don't like maple syrup. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like maple syrup? No, it gets on everything. Oh, oh God. And everything just tastes your, syrup. Your citizenship has been yeah. revoked. And you don't like coffee either, do you? Cold brew. Cold brew. Uh -huh. Ah, okay. Yeah, the shock tune, and then you need some new tires, because these, yeah. these are not made for Ontario. We're not in Moab. No, oh, not yet. There's mud and snow here. Mm -hmm. Even trying to turn, you were just plowing straight through the snow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, those tires work great. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't want to grab at all. We'll get some tires for it. Maybe some LED whips and a few other goodies. Yeah, Party need, whips. Yeah. It's just what you need, more lights. Exactly. Party whips. <laughs> yes. Maybe but I guess uh, that's pretty much it, I think. Yeah, he's just going to take his sway bar out because we're never going to hug it back up, oh, so there's yeah. no need for that. And... Um, that's it, I'm just gonna go over the preload settings again. Oh, yes, yeah, Ground yeah. clearance, check all that, make sure it's all good. 
and then just put miles on it and yeah. keep notes. And if we need to make more changes to make the tune that much better, we will. Yeah. And if he ends up adding a bunch of weight and we need to respring it, we know there are 200 pound springs now. So maybe he'll go up to 250s or 225s. Yep. Depends what he adds. And if you have this machine at home, exact same model RC, the other models might be a different spring weight and whatnot. So yeah. if you have anything besides the RC, um, maybe don't take our word for it. I think they're just tires and the traction control module because you get different little, you get like mud rock and I think Yeah, but even with the Cowies, the trail edition was sprung differently than our oh, okay. special edition. So mm -hmm. it might be different, like they might, order, True, yeah. they might order different shock packages. Yeah. So now you know if you have one of these at home, that's how yours is sprung and if you're looking for different springs, you can uh, maybe play around with that if you're feeling confident. I guess we should do an oil change. We? Yeah, I just drink and watch. <laughs> you. I watch. <laughs> but yeah, I do all my own. I got to work on mine. <laughs> got any questions about anything we did or you want us to do a follow-up video, drop a comment below. And Thanks for watching. Yep. Till next time.